Thank you. Um, yeah, so my name's Sim, Sim Brody. I'm a designer and developer. Uh, I work uh, primarily front-end development. I do a lot of work with WordPress, uh, building and maintaining custom themes. Um, you might be thinking, first of all, um, WordPress developer, WordPress designer, we haven't seen his face much. Well, there's a reason for that. Um, let me just get a hang of this. That's the reason. Uh, Rufus and Mo, they're really cute, but I rarely make it out of the house. So being here is a massive treat. So as I was saying, I work across design and development. So I sometimes design sites for other people to build. This was just created as a series of uh, flats, Photoshop. Uh, someone else built it completely. I sometimes build sites that other people uh, have designed. Again, this came to me as a set of uh, Illustrator files uh, from an agency, and I built it as a custom theme in WordPress. Sometimes I do that. Sometimes I do both. So this was uh, something I designed and built. It went from uh, flats to uh, initial ideas, to flats, to uh, a test site, to uh, a custom theme. So I think there may be a few other people who do both out there. Are there any other people who do both out there, design development? Yeah, one or two. Cool, cool. Uh, so I, th I thought it would be useful to share my thoughts on that. Um, I mean, personally, I think it's brilliant to have a wide range of skills. It makes perfect sense to me. Uh, and I remember a few, a few years ago when I first became a freelance, I thought that when I entered the freelance world, I'd be kind of uh, lauded with my amazing dual skills. People would be blown away. Um, some people responded like that, a very small amount. But a more common response was this. <laughs> suspicion. It felt to me suspicion. It felt like some people didn't know where to place me, didn't know which kind of compartment to put me in, and, and, and they didn't like that. I remember uh, at an agency freelance event uh, a year or so ago, the agency were recruiting for both designers and developers, but they specifically said, people who do both don't apply, we're not interested. We, we can't fit you in, into our plans. And that seemed a bit strange. Uh, and then people often ask me, when I say I do both, they say, yeah, but which one are you really? Are you a designer or a developer? Um, and I've noticed that openings on job boards for, both, for people who do both are pretty rare. Um, and while much of my work with direct clients, business, local businesses, uh, national businesses, whatever, does encompass both, my work with agencies or other freelancers is almost entirely one or the other. I, I do development or design. And I think some of those larger agencies are missing something because we designer developers, I think, have something unique to offer. But before I go into what we have to offer, I, don't, I think it's not just an issue for the web industry. I think sometimes, as us us people who do both, sometimes view ourselves with suspicion. Uh, and I think we have to kind of overcome a bit of insecurity on that. Sometimes I worry I don't have the expertise of a real developer, or my designs are not as beautiful as, as ones that are done by a proper designer. But I think we designer developers need to overcome our inferiority complex. There's always going to be people uh, who know more than us, or who, who know more than anybody in any work. There's always going to be people who have more experience than you, even if you're a standalone des designer or developer. So I think we need to change our mindset and focus on the things that, that we bring to the table that most specialists don't. And that is tools, a wide-ranging skill set. What we can offer is we can offer a combined service for smaller, for smaller clients, which is what I often do. In larger teams, we, we can match, we can meet the demand, whether it be design or development, wherever it arises. We understand the perspective of the other side. We understand what works for them and what their frustrations are. So we design sites that are easy to build. And we understand that design, and from the other side, we, we understand that design is important. And we'll think of creative ways to bring a design to life. But it's important to remember that people who do both can still specialize as well as having a broad range of skills. 
So you could specialize in things, and I specialize in some of these things, JavaScript-based animation, or Bootstrap, or e-commerce sites, or simply WordPress, which is a fantastic tool for people who do both, because it, it gives you a, a kind of flying start on any project. But perhaps most importantly, I think working across a discipline stretches your mind. Uh, as you're pulling in different directions, and it helps to develop mental flexibility and creative ways of thinking. So I wonder if perhaps my own doubts and the occasional skepticism of the wider world arose from the fact that we designer developers haven't claimed a real name for ourselves. Saying you do both is almost saying you're a designer stroke developer is almost admitting you're a bit of one thing and a bit of another. Uh, and you're not a unified whole with your own unique set of skills. So I think that needs to change. We need something to call ourselves. Not that, but I think it illustrates that names are important. They can have an impact, and they can define you. So I think it's important we do choose a name. This is what I've come up with. Uh, first of all, it's not to suggest standalone developers aren't creative. It's just the, the, best, the best thing so far that I've come up with. I think it's better than web designer, because I don't think web designer kind of encompasses the development side of what we do. And creative developer feels like it encompasses the breadth of what we do, but it's also a thing in its own right. But I would, if there's time, I'd be interested in your thoughts on that. But now we've chosen our name, it's time to make sure we keep our superpowers up to date. So here are a couple of things I recommend for creative developers out there. Firstly, remember to specialize. Your field of expertise may be broad, but you can still bring specific design and development skills to your projects. You can specialize in areas that uh, combine the two, or in areas that are just, for example, typography or animation, or a partic particular JavaScript library or design style. Two. Get all the tools. You're covering a wide area, so it's really important you get all the help you can. So don't skimp on setting up your design development environment. Some of those premium tools that they're worth that initial outlay for in terms of the time, they'll save you. Three, best practice and training. Uh, keep your skills up to date, and that's not just development skills. It also applies to the latest design thinking. And make sure your working methods embrace best, best practice in areas such as uh, design thinking, uh, in areas such as planning and version control. You need to meet the standards of both a professional developer and web designer. Fourthly, collaborate. Uh, working in both design and, and development gives you a unique opportunity to collaborate with a really broad range of other professionals. Make use of that. And just because you can do everything on your own, Sometimes, don't always do that. And five, uh, good managed WordPress hosting. It's, it's definitely worth the money uh, in terms of the time it'll save you, uh, and hassle and headaches it'll save you. And that was, that's it. That was my super quick talk. Uh, I'd be really, thanks for listening. I'd be really interested in any thoughts or comments you might have. Thank you very much, Sim. Does anyone have a question for Sim? Over here, please. Thank you. Well, first of all, thank you very much. And as we were saying, I'm particularly interested in what you're saying because I'm also I'm more of a designer who talks to developers because the reality of it is that these days, most of us have to do that. You know, you're a, you, I, I know what I started as, which is a designer, and I'm not a full stack developer, not even close. But the reality is that a lot of developers do have to understand, at least understand design or stop having the imposter syndrome that you, you were talking about. So I think, and I'm, 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 this is kind of exactly what, what I'm doing, but in the, maybe from a different perspective from yours. So I think it's um, really great that you sort of brought it up and, and um, are talking about it and saying that, yes, it's possible. Because so many developers think that, uh, you know, you need to be artistic or have gone to art school to 
be able to, you know, to properly design. And I completely don't agree with that. So, yeah, that's true. so I guess it's not a question. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good point. I agree. I agree. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and sometimes developers think they can't be creative when, in fact, uh, they are. It's just not the visually creative. The process is creative. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Just Cheers. <laughs> Thank you. Are there any more comments or questions for Sim over here, please? Hey, uh, hey, what you've described sounds exhausting. <laughs> the constant need to, to upskill and to, to fight against that feeling that everything's moving more quickly than you can keep up with, as well as keeping up with client demands and everything like that. Um, so I guess the question is, how do you, uh, how do you balance that with having small kids as well and with, or you know like that's a lot i i have full-time developers that feel that they're not keeping up with everything yeah. they need to keep up with how do you balance that with design and with uh yeah. technology well um firstly nothing helps balance against two small kids so <laughs> um but um uh i guess it's a question of uh, prioritization so 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 you can you, you do still need to specialize, and you do still need to realize where your boundaries are. For example, uh, what I was saying about hosting, I realize that I'm not going to do any of that. Uh, I'm going to hand that over to hosting company. If there's a problem, I'll be on the line to them. So, so you, you still have to have those boundaries, and you still have to specialize in, uh, in certain areas, even though your skill set is quite broad. Um, and I guess also you have to pick and choose the type of jobs you do as well and the type of jobs you take. So I know there's certain uh, pieces of work I, I, I won't take because they're, they're, be, they're, they're kind of not... Uh, it's not the area I, I want to uh, prioritise. It's not the area I want to work in. So I kind of... Even though my skill set broad, I can focus down within, within those areas still. But it's exhausting. But as you say, being a developer now, front end, a developer now is exhausting in terms of how much you have to keep up with. It, it's, it, it, it's, always, it's always going to be in, in, the, in the kind of web field, I think, the way it's going now. You have to kind of, you're always moving to keep up. But the flip side of being exhausting is that it's very, um, uh, it's kind of energizing too, because it's so interesting. You're always learning new things. So I don't know if that answers, answers your question, but. No, it's good. So um, setting boundaries around what you know your your limits are, and then using that creative energy to to motivate you through the the next learning cycle. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Thank you. <laughs> Cheers. Thank you. Are there any more questions or comments for Sim? Down here, please. Hello. Hey. Hello. I like the term creative developer. Um, I've referred to myself as a a website producer in the past. Oh, yeah. I design and develop as well. Um, I looked up the term website producer on, on Wikipedia and it kind of matched the work that I was doing. Okay. Um, so that's, that's been a term that I've used in the past, but I think I prefer yours. Oh, brilliant. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> Not really a question. Yeah, a oh, well, thanks. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's quite hard coming up for a name. I, I know there's, I spotted something called after I put these slides together, Creative Coder as well, I spotted yeah. out there, I think which has been around for a while. But uh, that could encompass something kind of wider than, than development maybe. So yeah, I think it's, it's the best one I've come up with so far. Yeah, but I'm open to suggestions. Okay. Cheers. Thank you, Jeremy. Is there anybody else? Gentleman over here? Um, also like creative developer. Um, cool. I, I face a slightly different problem. I run a curriculum area in, in FE colleges where we're trying to uh, produce the next generation. The problem that we're finding is that the, the people that set the courses, the curriculums that we're able to pick from are splitting the two. Right. So 
we either have a creative design focused course that only moves to prototyping and doesn't actually develop anything, or it's a full on development um, course where they do very little um, creative design or visual language or visual communication. So we have to get creative in how we handle that to get the, the two courses mm -hmm. working together so that we create a, a full product at the end. But it, uh, with the new T levels that are coming up at level three, um, it's becoming more and more problematic. The focus is, is fully on programming and developing and very little focus on mm -hmm. the creative development, which I think is a shame. Yeah, I think it's too. Do you, do you find that your students want to, want to do both? But, and they're being pigeonholed, or...? No, we find... We, programmers are programmers, mm -hmm. um, and you can spot a programmer a mile off, and, and when they come to, to look at the, the prospectus, some people are very specific about what they want to do. But we find that they, once they're, they're into the course, they start to understand that there is, a, there is a, a side to it which sort of exists before it, it gets to them, mm -hmm. which they don't experience. So they're, they're getting it straight from their starting to program and to develop something without the input from a design team. So they're sort of seeing a, a, the back end of something and, and they have very little understanding about uh, user experience or, or visual language or, or even target audience. The other side um, who, who do study that and they want mm -hmm. to do that, they, they're visually engaged and, and they want to create something, feel frustrated because they're only allowed, as far as the curriculum is concerned, to prototype. We actually go beyond that. We let them build it. Yeah. But there's, there's no point scored for them in their assessment for actually building the product. They're, mm -hmm. they're just to design to prototype. And I feel it's really short-sighted. And, and I can see down the line it becoming a bit of a problem because mm -hmm. we're, we're separating it where we should be joining it together. It should, there should be far more joined up thinking mm -hmm. about how we approach because design is design. Design is not just visual design, it's the whole system is designed. And I think mm -hmm. there needs to be far more integration. And what I'm discovering is that we're separating it out right at the moment we should be integrating it. And, mm -hmm. I, and I think it's a, it's a bit of a sad move, really. Yeah, I agree. I agree completely. I don't know how we, I'm not, don't know how, how we tackle that. I mean, is it, is it because of the demand from the industry? For this? Is, is that what's driving it? Um, it sort of started with Michael Gove, really, um, and he. So the the specifications are written with with a, a lot of input from industry, but it might be uh, it might be Microsoft giving the input. It it might be Fujitsu giving the input. So it's not. It's large companies. It's large corporations that have defined okay. departments within their setup that mm -hmm. can afford that that put the input into the design of the curriculum, not people that build for, for SMEs or micro right, businesses yeah. or, or people that operate on their own or, or a team of one or two. Mm -hmm. It doesn't cater for that at all. So yeah. we have to sort of be creative in how we present it and how we produce it within the curriculum area yeah. ourselves, which we shouldn't have to do, really. No, no. Thank you. Thank you very much. So we're out of time for questions. Sim, are you going to be around later? I will be, yeah. That's great. <laughs>